The Magnificent Empire, the city of Saskatoon's first grand hotel. The town of Saskatoon in 1905, viewed from Nutana, as it appeared prior to the incorporation as a city. At the time, the newly constructed King Edward School was the most prominent structure in the small community. David Boubier and Andrew Smythe finance and construct a grand 56-room hotel in the then-fledging city of Saskatoon. The Empire Hotel is seen under construction in early 1906. On the right can be seen the Baldwin Livery Stable, where the Baldwin Hotel later stood. In background is the Bank of Hamilton, later the Tucker Block. Saskatoon's first Dominion Day Parade, after its incorporation as a city, was held on a wet and muddy 2nd Avenue on July 1, 1906. The second J.F. Cairns store can be seen on the left with the newly built Empire Hotel on the far right. The imposing Empire Hotel dominates the skyline of the young city in 1907. A view of Empire that same year before the building housing Strickland's liquor store was constructed next door and prior to a veranda being added to house of Dr. H.D. Weaver's residence, seen on the left on 20th Street East adjacent to the hotel. In 1908 and 09, D.W. Boubier constructed a new building adjacent to the Empire Hotel on 2nd Avenue. This structure was initially known as the Boubier Block and later as the Empire Annex. Strickland's Limited, a wholesale liquor distributor, was to share the occupancy of the lower level of the building for several years with the Northern Bank. The following year, 1910, was to see the opening of the new Baldwin Apartment Block, later the Baldwin Hotel. Saskatoon's burgeoning 2nd Avenue. In spite of its dirt road surface, Saskatoon's main downtown street, 2nd Avenue, was starting to show definite signs of the post-World War I boom activity. From 1905 to 1910, substantial new major structures were beginning to appear with increasing frequency. Looking south on 2nd Avenue from 21st Street towards the Empire Hotel in 1910, Prominent new buildings from the left of the photo are the Canadian Bank of Commerce, Cairns Department Store, Central Drug Store, and Heintzman & Company. Looking northward towards 20th Street on 2nd Avenue South in 1907. Joseph Sudden's Arrival Having made and lost a fortune on the London Corn Exchange in the late 1800s, Joseph Sudden, his wife Emily, and their 11 children sailed for Canada in March of 1903. With only $80 in their pockets, the family headed west with the Britannia, or Bar Colonists. After arriving in Saskatoon, Sudden decided that instead of moving on to Lloydminster area, they would remain in that location, as he was of the opinion that the small town would definitely expand in the future. After initially renting a shack and acquiring some livestock, Joseph Sudden opened a dairy store on 2nd Avenue and would also serve refreshments in nearby tents. In the process, building enough funds not only to purchase the shack on the property it stood on, but also to build a new house. Times were good, and as Sudden had predicted, the settlement of Saskatoon had now expanded into a small city of almost 5,000 people. The Empire Hotel changes hands. By 1909, the city's population had grown to more than 10,000. Joseph Sudden had amassed a considerable fortune through the purchase of farmland and other properties in and around the city and was looking for new ways to diversify. At about this time, the opportunity for Sudden to fulfill these ambitions presented itself when the impressive and still relatively new Empire Hotel was put on the market. So it transpired that in January 1910, David W. Boubier and Andrew Smythe sold the hotel to Joseph Sudden for a closing price of $110,000. The adjacent block to the south, then occupied by Strickland's and the Northern Bank on the ground level, and with 15 rental rooms on the upper floor, was also included in the purchase. Once in his possession, Joseph Sudden wasted little time in implementing his substantial renovation plans for the Empire. 
In 1910, a new east wing was added to the hotel, giving it a total of 110 rooms, 25 of which had private baths. And by 1912, the dormered roof line of the original structure had been removed in order to create an integrated additional story. The annex building to the south was also restructured to add a third floor and was connected via a tunnel to the main hotel. The piece de resistance, however, was the addition of an extremely elegant opera house and theatre. The construction project overseen by the Regina architectural firm of Story and Van Egmond from a design by William Geispert von Egmond was completed in an astonishing three months. On December the 29th, 1910, the Empire Theatre celebrated its grand opening with a performance of Gilbert and Sullivan's HMS Pinafore. In the photo on the left, the 200 block of 20th Street in 1910, looking west. Fencing can be seen at the rear of the Empire Hotel as construction of the theatre commences. For the theatre's grand opening and its inaugural show on December 29, 1910, the Saskatoon Amateur Operatic Society presented the Gilbert and Sullivan's operetta HMS Pinafore. It was by all accounts a great success, even though the casting smacked somewhat of a little nepotism, with Joseph Sutton's daughter Mabel landing the lead role of Josephine. The electric lights in the dress boxes and under the balconies showed off to great effect the sumptuous decor. Olive green, old gold and cream colours were featured throughout, with the theatre's pillars being draped in a plush gold fabric. Although not available for the inaugural production, temporary individual chairs were used to seat patrons on that occasion, the permanent Berlin-style opera seats that had been ordered from Europe eventually arrived. These were upholstered in fine olive green leather and everything was completed by the best quality crimson Wilton carpeting that had been installed throughout the facility. The total seating capacity of the new theatre was 1,154 with 442 on the main floor, 276 on the balcony, 400 in the gallery and 36 in the 10 dress boxes. In an advertisement taken out in the 1911 Henderson City Directory, Joseph Sutton promoted the newly refurbished Empire Hotel and Theatre as a home from home. Its 250 daily room rate was also emphasized as were the spacious sample rooms and accommodation to the substantial commercial traveler trade. At the time, both the hotel and the theatre had their own separate phone numbers, 231 and 608 respectively. The hotel's bar enabled patrons to purchase the best 26-ounce bottle of rum or rye for 75 cents and scotch for $1.25. Payment of a quarter enabled a man to pour his own shot and get a free chaser of beer. Just a few of the entertainers of the era that appeared on stage at the Empire Theatre in the early years included John McCormick, Boris Karloff, Fred Allen, Sir Harry Lauder, Eddie Foy and the Seven Little Foys, and Eva Tenque, the Queen of Vaudeville. During the first 15 years of its existence, the Empire Theatre was a regular port of call for a variety of vaudeville entertainers. The majority of these were not headline stars, but simply journeymen supporting artistes who, in many cases, barely eked out a living on the circuit. Books like Herbert Lloyd's 1919 publication, Vaudeville Trails Through the West, by One Who Knows, guided many a travel-weary entertainer via simple maps to theatre locations and the best modestly priced hotels and eateries to be found close by. In the case of Saskatoon, such a map shows the location of the Empire Theatre and also that of the nearby Elite Café who promoted the fact that they catered to performers and were located just a block away from the theatre. Another establishment, the Hub Cafe, about two blocks away, touted Yankee Coffee and the slogan that all the acts ate here last week. The location of both the CNR and CPR stations are also shown on the map. Over the years, the Empire Theatre advertised extensively through the print media. Policy notices were also relayed to the public in this manner, such as this special theatre notice, which goes out of its way to rather defensively emphasize that if you break the rules, you must suffer the consequences, as we are not to blame and it is not our fault. 
In 1918, all theaters in Saskatoon, including the Empire, were ordered closed on October the 20th that year due to the outbreak of the Spanish flu. They were to remain closed for over a month and were not to reopen until November the 24th, by which time the deadly epidemic had subsided somewhat. A second, more modest renovation of the hotel was carried out by Joseph Sutton in 1913. This included adding embellishments to the roof line of the building, which dramatically improved its visual appearance. However, by 1914, Sutton's fortune was once again in decline, and the following year the Empire Hotel and Theatre passed into the hands of the Colonial Investment and Loan Company of Toronto, who closed it in 1915. It was reopening in 1917 under the banner of the Empire Hotel Company Limited and the general managership of Alexander C. Hosey. The substantial sum of $25,000 was spent remodeling and refurbishing the theater portion in order to more easily accommodate the showing of motion pictures. The work also included the installation of a new independent heating system for the facility, which had previously, if somewhat ineffectively, utilized the hotel's boiler heat. By 1920, Sutton had essentially lost everything. He, his wife Emily, and youngest son Bernard left Canada to reside in Auckland, New Zealand, remaining there until the mid-1930s, when they returned to live out their remaining days in the Toronto area. By April of 1921, the Colonial Investment and Loan Company had decided to vest themselves of the Empire Hotel and a group led by Alexander Hosey that also included J. Lauren Hill and John Wagner were able to purchase the facility for the sum of $125,000. At the time, these investors also owned and operated the Queen's Hotel. The new proprietors were soon to invest in improvements to the structure, including the installation of an elevator, a top floor banqueting hall, and a renovated dining room. By this time, the hotel's theater had also changed hands and was now controlled by Calgary resident James Davidson. In 1914, the Empire Theatre had first begun to screen movies to complement its live stage productions. However, after being sold and converted to the Victory Theatre in 1930, it became almost exclusively a full-time movie house, with the exception of the odd amateur stage performance. From approximately 1916 on, the Annex building adjacent to the Southside Empire on 2nd Avenue began renting rooms to the public under the name of the Great West Rooming House. The three-story building remained a rooming house until December 1921 when a fire, which the Phoenix newspaper reported as having started in the rear of Dixie Junko's shop on the ground floor, destroyed much of the property. In October 1922, the rebuilt structure reopened as the Great West Hotel under the ownership of David Elise. Guests could phone, wire, or write for reservations for one of the hotel's 42 rooms. According to a newspaper advertisement of the day, room costs, which offered the comparative luxury of hot and cold water, started at $1 a day. The Great West Hotel was in business through 1932, changing its name in 1933 to the Yale Hotel. Records indicate the Continental Hotel took over the building in 1967 and operated as such until about 2007. By the 1950s, the aging Empire Hotel's appearance had once again reverted to an aesthetically rather plain looking structure. However, in 1951, it was able to boast of the fact that it was the first home of the city's fledging CKOM radio station. In July of 1956, after 35 years of ownership, Alexander Hosey sold the Empire Hotel to a syndicate of Saskatoon businessmen led by David and Sim Yip, the proprietors of First Avenue's Royal Hotel. Although not officially confirmed, the purchase price was estimated to be in the range of $300,000. Also, by the late 1940s, the Odeon-operated Victory Movie House had again changed its name to The Hub, and this, the last reincarnation of the old Empire Theatre, was finally demolished in 1958 to make way for additional parking spaces for the hotel. 
In 1964, the old empire's interior was basically torn out and rebuilt. Whilst its classic brick exterior was covered in a marbled and tile finish, in an attempt to modernize the look of the structure. On the completion of these upgrades, the building was renamed the Executive Motor Hotel. Following a further million dollar renovation in 1979, the name was changed yet again to the Capri Motor Hotel. However, by the early 1990s, the building had ceased to be a viable commercial proposition, prompting the owner at that time, a North Battleford businessman named Pius Pfeiffer, to graciously donate the structure to the Voyager Club Charitable Institution. This entity initially tried to run the structure as a hostel and housing for low-income senior citizens under the name of Capri Place, but with somewhat limited success, and over time changed its focus to become a provider of supported housing services for those at risk in Saskatoon. Consequently, in 2007, the nonprofit's group's name was changed to the Lighthouse Supported Living, Inc., and today the building still continues to be utilized as an emergency shelter and supported living facility. But 114 years later, the bones of the glorious old empire still remain, hidden under all of that prosaic marble and tile.